What's up guys, I'm Ira Rochelle and this is Too Deep. In our previous videos, we explained that the Nephilim, the giants of old, weren't descended from angels and women, but instead came from under the earth. The descendants of angels and women were the mighty men of old, men of renown, according to Genesis chapter 6 verse 4. So with that said, let's dive right into this. If the Nephilim were originally from under the earth, how did they get onto the earth before the flood and after the flood. Let's take a quick look at the very first time the Nephilim are mentioned, Genesis chapter 6 verse 1 through 4. When man began to multiply on the face of the land and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of man were attractive, and they took as their wives any they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not abide in man forever, for he is flesh, his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of man and they bore children to them. These were the mighty men who were of old, the men of renown. They were on the earth at the same time the sons of God came down because of their sexual lust for human women. So, could it be that the sons of God leaving heaven opened up a portal under the earth at the same time since they seem to only be able to enter and exit heaven when they're called or sent from heaven to earth and vice versa? Here's what I'm talking about. Job chapter 1 verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan also came among them, as well as Job chapter 2 verse 1. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them to present himself before the Lord. There was a day when they came to present themselves to the Lord, and Satan also came with them. To me, that sounds like a door to enter into heaven was opened, and Satan was able to enter through that same doorway that the sons of God used in order to present themselves to the Lord. So if these sons of God in Genesis chapter 6 left heaven without permission, then would it not stand to reason that they had to force their way through a door in heaven to get to earth? And if they forced open a door, then would it not stand to reason that they may have just opened another portal that brought the Nephilim up on the earth from under the earth by mistake? This would now make sense why it says the Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterward when the sons of God came into the daughters of man and they bore children to them. These were the mighty men who were old, the men of renown. Genesis 6 verse 4. Because not only was this the time period they came on the earth, but it was how they were able to get onto the earth as well. Now this begs the question, how could they get on the earth after the flood if there wasn't a second incursion causing another portal to appear and they all died off in the flood? Well, as we stated in our previous videos, the children of the angels and human women were referred to as mighty men, which is the Hebrew word gabor which means mighty, powerful. This is the same word used to describe Nimrod. Genesis chapter 10, verse eight through nine. Cush fathered Nimrod. He was the first on earth to be a mighty man. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Therefore, it is said like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before the Lord. What was Nimrod fighting and defeating in order to receive this title? But let's keep reading. Genesis chapter 10, verse 10 through 12. The beginning of his kingdom was Babel, Erech, Akkad, and Kalna, and the land of Shinar. From that land, he went into Assyria and built Nineveh, Rehoboth-ur, Kala, and Rezin between Nineveh and Kala, that is the great city. It says that the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. What's so special about Babel? Well, let's read. Genesis chapter 11, verse one through nine. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, come let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. 
Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they all have one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language, so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. The people during the time of Babel had had one language and they had one mind. They weren't divided and fighting, they were together in unison with one goal in mind. Even after God changed their language and dispersed them, they still seemed to work together because Nimrod built Eric, Akkad, and Kalna in the land of Shinar. From that land, he went into Assyria and built Nineveh, Rehoboth, Ur, Kala, and Rezin between Nineveh and Kala, Genesis 10, 10 through 12. Nimrod wasn't living in all those cities. No, the people dispersed were. They weren't at war with each other. So who was Nimrod fighting? Now, I want you to understand the people weren't literally trying to make a tower tall enough to have its top in the heavens. No, they were trying to build a device that either teleported them into heaven or opened the doors, windows, or gates of heaven. Okay, now I know what many of you may be thinking, but hear me out, hear me out. The Bible tells us accounts of teleportation. In fact, it tells us of more than one account of teleportation devices. For more on teleportation, teleportation devices, check out out our videos does the bible support teleportation and teleportation devices in the bible both of which you can find under our too deep category or playlist and if you've ever wondered what happened to the tower of babel check out our video what happened to the tower of babel which is also under our too deep category or playlist so could it be that the tower of babel got god's attention because it opened a portal under the earth letting the nephilim on the earth once again now this would make sense why it never says they left off building the tower, but only the city, because the finished tower didn't open up a portal to the heavens above, but instead opened up a portal under the earth. This also explains why Nimrod was the first to become a mighty man. The descendants of angels and humans had supernatural powers because of their father's angelic genes. So they could fight and defeat the Nephilim because of their own strength. Whereas Nimrod is stated as being the first mighty man and a mighty hunter before the Lord. This now insinuates that Nimrod only became a mighty hunter, only became a mighty man. He only overcame, he only defeated because of the strength of the Lord, not his own might. Like the demigods of Genesis 6 verse 4. Now, I know this contradicts the popular belief that Nimrod was a horrible man, an antichrist, and dictator of sorts, but never does the Bible say that Nimrod was the one that forced the people into making the tower, or that he was behind the idea, or that he was evil at all. The scripture says that all the people came together and decided it together. This was because they had one mind and goal, to not be dispersed over the face of the earth. The Bible says that Nimrod was a great man of God. He fought and hunted before the Lord. That means he fought and hunted in the presence of the Lord with the assistance of the might and power of the Lord. Let's address one more time the Nephilim came on the earth. Numbers chapter 13 verse 32 through 33. So they brought to the people of Israel a bad report of the land that they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone to spy it out is a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people that we saw in it are of great height. And there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, who come from the Nephilim, and we seemed to ourselves like grasshoppers, and so we seemed to them. These Nephilim in the land of Canaan were so large in height that the Israelite spies refused to go in and take the land the Lord had promised them. This happened not long after they defeated al and all his people. <gasps> 
because Agha Bashan was the last remnant of the Raphaim in Bashan, and he was approximately 16 to 18 feet tall according to Deuteronomy chapter 3 verse 11. He was a descendant of the Nephilim that came on the earth during the time of Nimrod because the Raphaim and Nephilim are all the same kind of beings according to Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 10 through 11. Now, as we stated in part three, the reason Og was so much smaller than his Nephilim ancestors was because of the lack of atmospheric pressure on the earth. The less pressure on their bodies caused them to get smaller in size from generation to generation. Now, if Og, king of Bashan, had become so much smaller than his ancestors that the people of Israel weren't afraid of battling him, why were the Nephilim in the land of Canaan so huge? Now, as we also stated in part three, which you should watch because it was awesome. The Nephilim in the land of Canaan weren't descendants of the Nephilim from the Tower of Babel, like Og was. These Nephilim had come recently. They came recently with other beings in the land of Canaan. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 17. They sacrificed to demons that were no gods, to gods that they had never known, to new gods that had come recently whom your fathers had never dreaded. These Nephilim came up on the earth around the same time as the false gods in the land of Canaan. So they hadn't been there long enough for the atmospheric pressure to decrease their size as it had decreased Og size. So while you guys ponder all of these things, let's sum everything up for you real quick. The Nephilim are originally beings from under the earth. They can only come up on earth when a doorway of some kind is open. In Genesis chapter 6 verse 1 through 4, the Nephilim were able to come up on the earth because the sons of God, certain angels in heaven, left heaven and came to earth without permission. This forcing of a doorway in heaven to open had a residual effect of opening a doorway under the earth. The Nephilim came up on the earth again after the flood through the Tower of Babel. This tower was intended to open up a portal into heaven, but instead opened a portal under the earth, allowing the Nephilim onto the earth again. This caused Nimrod, a man of God, to become the first mighty man on earth because he went in the strength of the Lord and defeated the Nephilim, just as the demigods, the descendants of angels and women, did in Genesis chapter 6 verse 4. Og, king of Bashan, was a descendant of the Nephilim that came up on the earth during the time of Nimrod. The lack of atmospheric pressure on each generation caused their size and stature to decrease over time. The Nephilim came on the earth one more time recorded in scripture at the same time as the demons in the land of Canaan. These Nephilim weren't the same as Og of Bashan because they were much, much more large in size and stature. They had just come up recently with the demons during the time of Moses and the Israelites' conquest of Canaan. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. If you want to further grow your relationship with God and have a daily devotional sent directly to your phone or email, subscribe to our website, holdtohope.org, or join our Telegram channel, Hold to Hope, where you can also receive an encouraging verse, quote, and lyric of the day. If there's ever a video of ours taken down on YouTube that you want to see, it'll always be available on our website, Telegram channel, and Rumble. So feel free to keep that in mind. And until next time, God bless.